I'm Candace Morey. I'm a Chancellor's Fellow in the Department of Psychology, and I study memory. The biggest misconception that students have about revising is um, that they should do a lot of it, and furthermore, that they should reread everything that they've read during the course to that point, that they should take out their lecture notes and read them again, and they should take out their textbook and they should read it again, and that this will help them remember the information that they learned earlier in the course. It works out that research suggests that this is actually a pretty poor way to learn, and um, it's probably resulting in a big waste of time and increase of stress. There's a great study with extremely obvious results that's conducted by Karpicki and Rodiger. And what Karpicki and Rodiger did was that they asked a, four groups of students to learn some Swahili English vocabulary words, which none of the students knew. This was completely new information for them. So all of the students started out with the same task. They read two word pairs of um, Swahili and English words, several dozen of them. And then after they were familiar with them, they were tested on each one. They were given the Swahili word and then asked to generate the English word that went with it. Everybody did this part. What differed then was what happened after this part, what happened in some revision sessions. In the group that expended the most effort, they revised by doing four practice sessions in which they did this entire process again. They read every word pair, and then they were tested on every word pair. Another group reduced effort by skipping the rereading once they'd already got that word pair right. So you've already got Mashua Boat, so we don't read that one anymore, but we still test that one. And they went through that four times. They kept reducing the amount of reading they would do, but always continued to generate each of the vocabulary words at test time. Another group did the opposite to reduce their effort. They continued rereading all of the vocabulary words during the reading phase, but during the testing phase, they were only tested on the ones that they had got wrong on a previous instance. And then finally, just for comparison, there's the least effort group. They stopped rereading the pairs once they had got them right once, and they also stopped testing them once they had got them right once. The results in this study were really obvious. So, at the beginning, of course, nobody knows what these things are. They're getting 0% of them right. Um, but during the study sessions, every group is getting about 30% right in the first instance. And then they drastically improve so that after four instances of these study sessions, they finally know all of the words perfectly. So it doesn't matter which strategy they pick for the short-term learning. Interestingly, everybody was then asked, right, now that you've learned all these words, how well do you think you're going to do when we test you about it in a week? And every group reported similar confidence in their ability to perform on the test a week later. They all thought they would know about 50% of them not studying anymore at this point. However, they were completely wrong. <laughs> so what actually happened a week later is that the groups who were spending their effort on retesting themselves knew 80% of the words still, and the groups that were not retesting themselves knew less than 40% of the words. So even the group that skipped reading the words over and over again and only retested themselves on the words over and over again, they were doing just as well as the group who repeated every step over and over again. However, the group that um, kept rereading but stopped testing themselves was performing under 40%. Now, these groups spent similar amounts of time, similar amounts of effort, um, but this group is getting a first on their exam in Swahili vocabulary, and this group is failing their exam in Swahili vocabulary. So time spent testing really pays off big. So it's important to think about how you apply this in real life because the exams that you're taking, the courses you're taking at university are much more complicated than just learning a few dozen new vocabulary words. Still, these principles hold up. So what I think that students should do based on memory research in order to get as much out of the time they spend studying is first of all, start really early. So um, students tend to think that the best studying they're going to do is right before their exam. But this isn't necessarily true. You can't possibly learn everything from a whole university course in the few hours before your exam starts. You really need to start early. Um, now, given that you have to start early, 
how should you maximize the potential to remember the things that you learn in um, September when you're taking an exam in December? Well, what you should do is space out your learning sessions. So if you're going to, say, do five sessions of studying between one moment and the start of your exam, you will do better and you will remember more if you space those study sessions out over a longer period than over a shorter period. If you arranged for yourself five study sessions in a day, you wouldn't remember as much as if you arranged them over the course of a month. Like Karpicki and Rodiger found, you should think about how you can, in, how you can engage in retrieval practice during your studying. And the stuff you have to study is probably not reducible to flashcards that you can make with vocabulary words, one language on one side, one language on the other. It's more complicated than that. But still, there are a lot of things you can do to implement retrieval practice in your own study. You can ask yourself questions. You can generate questions based on the things you hear your lecturers say during their lectures. You can find questions. Your textbook probably includes study questions and exercises that your teacher hasn't covered explicitly, but that you can use to try to regenerate the material that you've learned. Another thing that's important, and an extension, I think, of the idea of testing yourself, is to practice elaboration. So in any course, some of the things that you learn will be familiar to you. They'll be um, reviewing old content from previous courses. And then some things will be completely new. And so you want to spend some time thinking about how these completely new things map onto things that you already know. And finally, all students forget this. <laughs> in, in your push to work so hard, um, you forget that it's really important to take care of yourself. Your brain is a part of your body, and just like any part of your body, it's operating better if you sleep regularly, if you eat nutritious food on a regular basis, if you get enough exercise. You shouldn't skimp on any of those things, and you should make time to take good care of yourself.